the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And now our hymn of praise. Jen went and changed the opening hymn on me, so I'm not sure what the hymn of praise is going to be. What do you got, Al? Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples. You give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare us for the joy of your returning. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I guess you can be seated. Peggy, it's up to you to tell them whether to stand again for the gospel. Just a bit okay, be seated. This morning's gospel is uh, from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. It is the parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property, the, property to them. To one, he gave five talents of money, to another, two talents, and to another, one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful ser servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. 
His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has, who has will be given more and he will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here ends the gospel. Attendance is pretty low today because um, I suspect we have some hunters that attend this service. And they are all busy this morning. But I see some kids. Do you want to come forward for a children's sermon? And I don't want to terrify you. I just want to invite you. Do you feel like coming up? Hey, all right. He's very courageous. So hang with him and he'll, he'll show you the way to go. Okay, so what is something that you are very good at? Soccer. Soccer? Art? Fishing. Fishing. Wow, what an interesting spread and differences. Okay, now name something you're not very good at. Basketball. You're not good at basketball? Okay. What else? Homework. <laughs> Trace, what do you got? You're not very good at art? Okay, that just drove my point right home. You guys are perfect. See, that's why we have to have so many people here. Everybody here is good at something. And everybody here is not good at something. So thank you, God, for bringing you together. Because what you're not good at, she's really good at. I am a terrible cook. But I know some really good cooks out there. And so God needs all of us and all of what we're good at. And then we lean on the people when we're not so good at something, especially if you need help with homework. I bet there's somebody that could help you with some homework. Not do it for you, but they could help you. So I want to thank you for being so courageous in coming up here. And I want to thank you for sharing what you're good at. So in case we need somebody, we know where to turn for the artist and um, the basketball, no, not the basketball player, the soccer player. If we need somebody to lead the church in a soccer game, we're turning to you. That sounds like a fun way to say, what's that? You're good at soccer too? All right. Well, you guys can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming forward. I appreciate that. What a weird parable Peggy just shared with us. Perhaps a little background information might help us, might help us appreciate what this gospel reading is about. First of all, a talent. Now, I think this word has a double-edged 
meaning in today's gospel, but more to that in a moment. Back, back in biblical days, there was a definition for talent that's a little bit different than what we think of when we use that word today. And this definition you may not know. So a talent was a lot of money. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. A talent was like a big rock of gold. And it was the equivalent to what a person would make back then in 15 to 20 years of income. So to compare what that would be like in the United States today, $60,000 is the average salary a worker makes in a year. So 20 times that would make one talent equal to $1,200,000. I'm going to round that down to a million just for ease of calculating. So in this parable, a rich man goes away and takes three of his servants to look after his money. And to the first servant, he gives $5 million. To the second servant, he gives $2 million. And to the third, he gives $1 million. What would you do if you were given that kind of money? Now remember, this is not your money, but you are responsible for taking care of it. Taking care of it for the one who owns it. Knowing that, what would you do with it? Well, we hear that the first two invested it, and they got great returns doubling their investments. But the third guy got nervous, and he took his million dollars, and he dug a hole, and he buried it in his backyard. And he gets thrown into the outer darkness for doing that? I gotta say, I feel sorry for that guy. He was just trying to play it safe. But God is an investor. God does not play it safe when it comes to investing in people. Think about it. God created this perfect paradise of a universe. And then he left humanity in charge of it. Uh, given how people are, that was not playing it safe, God. But God believes in each one of us. And God invests in us. Then, skip to the New Testament. After generations of preachers, prophets, and pastors trying to teach humans the way God wanted this beautiful paradise of a universe to run, the people still weren't doing so very well. They weren't following God's desire that we all love one another. So God came to us in Jesus to show us, to guide us, to reveal to us how to live as God's beloved and love one another. And how did this Jesus come to us? In the form of a tiny baby born in a stinky barn to an unwed, poor peasant girl. There could have been so many more other powerful ways to come to us. But God wanted to show how much he invests in people. God wanted to show it didn't matter what their current circumstances were, what their birth circumstances were, what their intelligence level was, God chose a quiet, simple way to come here. 
And then Jesus. Well, Jesus was a real investor as well. He invested in 12 not very intelligent fishermen to carry on his message. And then he challenged the religious and government leaders, not smart, Jesus. These leaders had the power to kill him, which they did. And as Jesus hung on that cross, he could have called in legions of angels to just totally wipe out the bad guys. But he didn't. Jesus chose instead to forgive them and to keep working for the peace that God desires. Because Jesus believes in people. And Jesus invests in a future with us. And what is the future? What is the investment that we are invited to bring about with God? We're given talents. And here's where the word talent has a double meaning. We are not given millions of dollars, no. We are given talents, skills, gifts, abilities that are beyond measure. We think we don't have any skills or talent. God's given them to us beyond measure. What are we going to do with them? Will we invest them, use them, expand them? Or will we dig a hole in the backyard and bury them? Well, the parable seems to be pretty crystal clear on what God, the great investor, wants us to do with them. When we invest in our faith, it can be risky. It's risky to be a Jesus follower because we are encouraged to do things that do not have a guaranteed outcome. We are invited to live a life that doesn't play it safe. And maybe, just maybe, this parable teaches us that it's okay to invest in our faith, to invest in those risks. It's okay if we fail. If we fail in the eyes of society all while trying to do God's work, as long as we are stepping out in faith, we are trusting that God will use what we think is a teeny tiny little talent God can find a way to use that. We need to be investors along with God. Try something. Use our talents for something that can bring about that whole love one another vision that God planned for his perfect paradise. So my brothers and sisters, Recognize the wealth of talents you have been given. Trust that God has given them to you for a purpose in his kingdom. Now go out and invest them in a worthy cause. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Please join.